Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. Are you a Windows user who's considering moving to Linux, but you're not sure if you're going to be able to adapt because you're just so used to the look and feel of Windows? Or perhaps you're a Linux user already, uh, but you'd quite like the interface to look like your old Windows system, but you're not sure how to go about theming it. Well, in both cases, perhaps Macula Lindos is for you. Let's have a look. Right, welcome back. Um, perhaps I should start by saying uh, we're in really strange times at the moment and I hope everybody out there is doing okay. I know that the UK is pretty much in lockdown and uh, I've personally been furloughed. Luckily, myself and my wife and family are, are all okay at the moment, but this thing, let's just call it that, seems to be sweeping the world at the moment. So stay safe, people. Stay inside. Practice social distancing. Um, right, so let's put that to one side. And let's go back to what we love doing, which is Linux. I've had a little bit more time on my hands, as I think most of you have, and I've started to think about what sort of things I should look at over the coming weeks. Because with being essentially trapped at home, uh, the one advantage of that is I'm going to be able to produce more videos, which I intend to do. Um, and I was looking at DistroWatch, just glancing through the uh, usual suspects, and I thought to myself, you know, most of us use one of the well-known distros. But sometimes we're, we're missing little gold nuggets, because there's a huge amount of distros out there. Some of them are one-man outfits, but they're brilliant. You know, you, you test them and uh, they can be really good. Don't get me wrong, there's some dogs out there as well. But I thought, well, let, let's look at a few lesser-known distros. And when I went searching, uh, I found one that, uh, well, I've called this a dead ringer distro. Um, Makula, Makulu Linux Lindos Edition. Um, so it's pretty obvious what that's a dead ringer for, it's a dead ringer for Windows. It's not a Windows clone. It's a Linux distro which is themed up to very much look like Windows. Now, it wouldn't be something that I would personally do, but I know that English Bob, for instance, has produced a, a few videos where he's themed up Cinnamon, and uh, he was really happy with the experience. Not everyone, however, is comfortable with getting down and dirty and installing various theme files. So there's certainly an outlet out there for uh, a distro that is already themed and has a certain look and feel. With Windows 7 going past support, I think we also have more people looking at uh, Linux now than ever before. And I have to say, Linux is probably in one of the strongest positions it's been in for an awful long time. And people may be looking at, uh, at Linux, but if they've used Windows all their life, they may not want to go to a completely different system that feels alien to them. Um, I, I, I've experienced that alien feeling myself as I've been diving into tiling window managers uh, over, over the last few weeks. And uh, it can be uncomfortable to start off with. Well, I came across this distro. Um, I'm not going to do an in-depth review of it. I'm, I'm just going to have a quick look at its look and feel. I've already installed it in VirtualBox, so I'm not going to take you through the installation, other than to say that it's essentially based on uh, Ubuntu Bionic, uh, but it has its own repository and packages as well. And uh, it installs pretty much like most modern distros do. Is it a Ubiquity? Uh, could be Ubiquity, could be Calamaris, 
but it was essentially a next, 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 next thing. Uh, and then I booted into the distro. So we'll have a look at that in a minute and have a quick run around the interface. But let's move over and have a look at the website where you can download load the image from. So this is the Makulu Linux website that you see in front of you with uh, the hippopotamus on the front, the pink hippopotamus. And uh, the strap line, Linux has never been so beautiful, beautiful easy or more fun to use. We are always doing something different. Okay, well, there's various things on this website, and there seems in theory to be three potential distributions. There's something called Core, which I believe is a standard XFCE distro, but there doesn't yet seem to be any download uh, links for that. There's another one called Flash. Same situation. I'm not sure what that's built on, and there are certainly no download links. But Lindos is available for download, and it was released uh, back in February. So that's what I've downloaded onto my machine and what I've installed in the virtual machine. So what is it? Um, well, it starts off by telling us it's not designed to be a clone of Windows. It's merely familiar territory for both Windows and Linux users. The themes and icons aren't replicas of Windows, although I have to say it's easy to be fooled once you see it. They are mere similar designs. That might be pushing the boat a little bit, saying that similar, almost exactly the same in some cases, I'd go as far as to say. But it doesn't matter which environment you come from, when you log into Windows or Lindos, I'm even saying Windows, you get a familiar sense of belonging. I'm not sure I ever had a sense of belonging in Windows, but there you go. We've added just enough to make Windows users feel comfortable, yet pushing them to explore the Linux world. Okay, fair enough. Linux users will feel instantly at home, feeling comfortable with the terminal and the rest of the tools and software yet maybe enjoy Windows-like themes and icon sets. Okay, so English Bob, I know you do. Lindos is also extremely beautiful. From the first logon, you'll simply fall in love without ple with how pleasing it is on the eyes. Okay, well, we'll have a look at that. So what's it based on? Well, apparently the previous version was based on uh, Debian. I think it was Debian testing. Uh, but it's now built on uh, their own base, um, which they call the Makulu Linux Constructor Base. Okay, a base they've spent a lot of time making and perfecting, and possibly one of the fastest, most flexible, and most stable bases floating around the net at the moment. Okay, so that's a big claim. Not to mention it is near bug-free. I've got no problem with people making statements like that, but the distro better live up to it if they're going to do that. Um, the base gets its core op updates from Ubuntu Bionic, with additional updates being supplied by Makulu directly. Unlike many other big developers that borrow their base from Debian or Ubuntu, we choose instead, or we chose instead, to build our own. This way, we don't inherit any known bugs that plague Ubuntu builds. And since we built the base, we know what's going on inside it. Okay. All good so far. So, key features. Makulu supplies core patches where needed and also hosts some key software. Um... It also supports Windows applications out of the box. You can now simply double click on an EXE or MSI, MSI file as you would in Windows and run it. Okay, so this is going to be Wine. Um, that's a big statement for Wine. Wine can work well, but it very much depends on the application you're, you're actually running with it. 32-bit um, library support's also been added to optimize uh, Steam and gaming experiences. 
Uh, you can start gaming straight out of the box without having to go through huge manuals of instructions to set it up. Steam Proton is fully supported, as is Flatpak and Snaps. Okay. It comes loaded with most daily used software. Um, we've spent a lot of time researching which packages should be used, and it's been trimmed down to a list that's comfortable. Blah, blah, blah. We've also catered to the disadvantaged that rely on screen readers or the need to magnify their desktop. Okay, all good. It's running the 5.3 kernel series. And that's pretty much it. There's a statement here from who, someone who I presume is the lead developer um, saying that he's actually based in Vietnam. Um, which has been very badly affected for, from the virus. So he's basically asking, if you can make a donation, please do, and there's a donation link there. He's also got a Patreon link. You don't need to donate, though, in order to download it. Uh, there's a few links here. Um, I found that the uh, one from SourceForge was the fastest the one from makulu linux direct was the slowest i started downloading it from makulu but i gave up after a while but sourceforge was fine they also make uh, an ova file so you can uh, import it straight into uh, open box sorry uh, virtual box if you want right well i didn't do that i just downloaded the standard iso and i've installed it myself so it all looks good in theory, but what's it actually like once it's installed? Well, let's move over to VirtualBox and have a look. Right, so we're now booting Makulu Linux. Obviously, the screen resolution at this stage is going to be quite small, but it will sort itself out once we've gone through uh, the login. It's got quite a nice... Uh, Splash screen there. I don't know if it has any sound because I, I disable that because it tends to mess up the mic. Okay, and here we are at uh, the login screen. I'm assuming that's light DM. I quite like the fact that automatically you've got this virtual keyboard. So that's quite a nice touch. Let me log in. Right, so here we are. You can see I'm running in software rendering mode. That's because I'm in VirtualBox. So we'll just click that one away. But this is the first impression you'll get of Makulu. And yes, it does look quite Windows-like. So we've got uh, a fairly bright and breezy wallpaper there. We've got a conky. Running over to the right, uh, telling us what our kernel is and what the RAM usage is. 886, 890 megs. Not too bad, given this is running in VirtualBox and it is also Cinnamon. So let's dive down straight away into the menu and see what we've got. I can already see we're using the Windows icons if uh, you look at the little uh, home icon there. And yes, it looks very much like uh, the Windows File Manager there. But okay, all good. So let's click on the menu. It's nice and clean. And let's go into programming. Now, this programming um, title <laughs> section wasn't there to start off with. I've just done a test. And you'll see in programming we have something called notepad plus plus let me click on that and see if it starts uh, because it's a windows program and i installed it through play on linux and you can see that it installed without a problem so i'll take you through that in a second but it's all very well saying that all you have to do is double click on an exe file and that's pretty much what i did and it worked 
So, Notepad++ a Windows application is already installed. LibreOffice Math is installed. And there we have the full LibreOffice suite and a document viewer. Now, I know they said that it's not a clone of Windows. <laughs> it's very similar in terms of the themes and icons. But I have to say, I mean, I haven't got the Microsoft Office and the Adobe um, Acrobat Reader original icons in front of me to compare, but, but it looks pretty much the same, even to the point that we're using, sorry, X, Excel, P, LibreOffice Draw, P for LibreOffice Impress, um, basically something that looks like a PowerPoint icon, LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Base, looks like an access icon to me, and that looks pretty much like the Office 365 logo to me. Okay, we've got Evolution there as well, and a document viewer. It could be Adobe Acrobat, but I would be very, very surprised if it was. And in fact, it's not, is it? It's a Vince. Yes, it's a Vince. Right, okay, fine. So we have all of our Office programs installed. There's a few games there, uh, including Steam pre-installed and Play on Linux. Okay. Favourite apps? Right, so we have a terminal. Let's see what term the terminal is. It's the GNOME terminal. Okay, fine. I noticed down on the, uh, on the panel, they also have a link to the terminal that looks pretty much like the... Uh, command prompt that you get in windows and yes it's the same thing it's the gnome terminal okay so they've really spent some time trying to get this to look and feel uh exactly like a windows system to the extent that our uh, software sorry our, our settings now looks like control panel we have got synaptic package manager there i'm pleased to say the driver manager calculator calendar Discs, Evolution, and Firewall Configuration. I'm assuming that is UFW or GUFW. Let me just log in and have a look. Yes, it is, but it's not on by default. So if you want to switch it on, obviously, you do that, and the Firewall is then enabled. Let's go back to the Favorites menu. What else have we got there? Leafpad. Play on Linux, Q for Wine, which I believe is another front end to Wine, a software center, okay, where you can go through the normal installation. I presume these are flat packs or snaps, but hey ho. Um, what else have you got there? You've got your terminal, time shift, okay, so you need to do backups and you've got a system monitor. And as you can see, RAM is creeping up uh, now to 1.2 gig. Strangely enough, Conkey says 989 gig, so not sure why that's different. Right, let's keep going. So preferences, okay, we can see the cinnamon base here. It looks pretty much the same as your standard cinnamon. Administration. App grid. Right, so discover and install apps specifically for Ubuntu, auto login, bleach bit, a link to donate, HTOP. Let's run HTOP and see what we're actually doing. 986 megs. Okay, so that's reading exactly the same as Conkey. What else have we got here? GDB, Grub Customizer. Uh, light DM greeter configuration, NTFS configuration. I recognize that icon. Uh, a package updater, add or remove software, printers, Q for wine, Samba share. Let's just click on that and see what it brings up. Okay, yeah, it's just the add or remove Samba share configuration utility. And what else? Um, system reset. Fix missing cloth, 
clock, themes, and desktop options. Okay, quite nice to have that. USB creator, X term and UX term, XFCE terminal as well, and Makulu updates. Okay, and there's the screen reader and the magnifier apps. And what have we got in sound and video? We have audio recorder, Kazam, which uh, I believe is a screen recorder and MPV media player. Up to internet, Discord is installed by default, Google Chrome, and Open Drive Sync, which is a Google Drive client. I believe this does sync your files with Google Drive, but it doesn't sync the folders. It just brings down the whole lot of them. We've got Remina for remote desktop access and Skype. Over in graphics, we haven't got the GIMP, but easy enough to install. Uh, we have Pinter and MyPaint. Catfish File Search, Clam TK, so it's already got antivirus installed. Um, in Grandpa Archives, Screenshot Variety for uh, your wallpaper, and the Virtual Keyboard and Wine Tricks. It's a nice, very clean-looking menu. What I do like about it as well is the right-click menu. Uh, which has all the normal things that you would expect. You can add desklets, you can change the desktop background. Let's try that. It's variety, so we come up with a range of different uh, pictures that we can use on the right-hand side. So if I move to that, or I move to that, it will just change. Or if I move to that... Okay, plenty of choice there anyway. Let me just close that down. What else do we have on here? Um, desktop clock. Right. Now, if you like Conky, personally, I'm not a fan, but I think this looks okay. It's all white, this one. And so if you have a really light wallpaper that white conkey may not show up so well. But you can actually change it very simply just by selecting the black clock. And as you can see, it comes straight back up. Or you can go back to white. So it's nice having a little switcher there. It also has a right-click link to scan for threats with uh, Clam, Clam Antivirus. I keep wanting to say it has a link there to your control panel, but of course it's not control panel. It's the system settings for Cinnamon. And you have an option here to change themes, which immediately looks very different to the standard Cinnamon uh, theme changer. You can actually open that up by going to the advanced theme manager, as it says, and you have all of your options there. But you can do a quick change here, just on the click of a button. Now, I believe the theme we've got at the moment, let's just open up a file manager so you can see the difference. I believe the theme that we've got at the moment, I'll drag this across here, is Windows 7. But we can go to classic Windows. Whoa, hello, Windows 98. And what does the menu look like? Yep, we're back at the original <laughs> that really does look like windows 98 internet google chrome and it's got the internet explorer thing okay or we could go to windows xp let's see what that does for us okay instantly changes everything including our file manager and right very blue Okay, or we could go to Windows 10. Uh, let's have a look at the menu there. I quite like that, I've got to be honest. Um, don't forget, I'm in VirtualBox, so this isn't going to do 3D. Uh, but on some of the YouTube videos that I've watched, this is all shiny and uh, transparent. It's not going to be on this demo. 
but you get the feeling. Let's move back to Windows 7. So, really nice. I mean, for a first look, I've had a few looks at this over the last few days and had a real play with it. And I have to say, it so far seems to be delivering on its promises. Play on Linux, I had never played with at all. So, installing Notebook++ plus plus today was a first. And this Play on Linux is quite impressive. It even downloaded Notebook++ plus plus for me. And it has links to a whole range of accessories here. Flash. I don't know why you'd want that anymore. Um, education. Games. Now, games, there's a huge amount of games that you can actually download. And there's even patches there that you can download. What about graphics? Adobe Fireworks, Photoshop, Google Picasso, Microsoft Paint. Microsoft Paint. You, do you know what? Shall we see if we can install Microsoft Paint now, just as a last thing? I've highlighted it. Let's click Install and see what happens. Right, well, I think that's it. Can we actually find it in, perhaps, not in graphics yet? Let's just uh, type paint and see if it can find it. Doesn't appear to have uh, actually appeared in the main menu yet. But it's here, so let's click on it and see what happens. Oh, I've noticed it's actually... Well, yeah. Yeah. That is indeed Microsoft Paint. And uh, I've only just noticed um, it's actually put a desktop icon on for the two Windows programs that I've installed. Um, yes, I do want to close it. Quite impressive. Look, guys, I'm going to leave it here. It is what it is, this. Um, it's running on an Ubuntu base. The developers have obviously done a lot of work with their own base as well. And they've spent a huge amount of time getting this themed to look very much like Windows. I should perhaps say that in the Advanced Theme Manager, you can actually see all the different themes that are available. So you don't have to stick with one of the defaults there that you can select at the click of a button. Um, right, there's a fair few there, isn't there? Um, hey, if nothing else... Download uh, the VirtualBox image, fire it up and see how you get on with it. But for now, let's go and have a chat about it. So that was Makulu Linux Lindo's edition. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, given that it doesn't really appear on the radar yet as far as a, Linda, uh, a Linux distribution is concerned, um, it's quite polished. It seems to work really well. There's a lot of work being put into it. And I think it probably deserves a bit more love than it currently gets in the uh, Linux community. Whether or not you'll be interested in it is going to be solely down to whether or not you like that Windows theming. It doesn't appeal to me, but I appreciate the fact that it's been done really well. So if you're looking at moving to Linux, it might be a good first move. If you're an existing Linux user and uh, you can't be bothered finding all the theme packages yourself and you just want to uh, install something that's Windows-like, give it a spin. Uh, it costs you nothing to download and install, but if it's good, I mean, remember... The developer over in Vietnam, they are having a really hard time with the virus at the moment. You know, by all means, make a donation. So that's pretty much it for today. I would normally say this week, but uh, this will go on a bit longer. Don't forget, guys, that uh, I'm also on Library. And uh, my little Facebook group, I think, has got to 24 now. Um, if you want to join, come over. You'll be very welcome. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. See you in a day or so. Cheers.